good evening. Thank you for uh, watching the uh, um, Onsen uh, Buddhist Smugglers podcast, season three, episode two. Um, it's unusual for us to do this time, but uh, it's because we, you know, uh, we want to do all free chippings for round one. That's why I three we picked this time. Good evening, Torek. Uh, how are you? Very good, Yoshi. And how are you, mate? Good, thank you, mate. Excellent. And probably we've uh, just delayed our show that we missed, I guess, last weekend. Um, yeah. Yoshi weren't really feeling up to it. Yeah. Like it's a, it's kind of you know hard to get up early in the morning on a dark cold day, and uh, my feelings are not too well, unfortunately. Sorry for about that. Yes. Uh, not at all. I think it's a very good decision and good strength to show that you can you can say no, I don't feel like it today, and we'll do it another day, and that's good. Just my. So let's get it started for uh, today anyway. So what's the news these days, Crash? Oh, well, it's good to be back and talking to you, Yosh. I've, I've missed it. Um, yeah. So I guess my highs uh, in the past couple of weeks, I got to play uh, in pub cricket, normally playing for the pub, but they had a sort of a special event where a couple of players from each pub joined together in teams for uh, pubs east of Brunswick Street and pubs west of Brunswick Street. Um, and we had a game and, and that was really good fun and getting to play with a lot of new guys and um, it was a really good, close game. So I enjoyed that very much. Nice. So where are you playing the uh, pub cricket? Uh, at the grounds in Fairfield, which is just very close to my house, it's so very convenient. <laughs> nice. Uh, I mean, the time when? Oh, okay. So that was um, on Sunday two weeks ago. Nice. Um, and in two weeks' time, we have our final sort of game of the year. It's a big tournament, um, knockout tournament where all the clubs play against each other for the big day not out trophy. Nice. Like, uh, who is your opponent? Like, which pub? Oh, there's there's a lot of pubs. Um, some of them would be the uh, Rose, the Standard, the Rainbow, um, the Royston, the Empress. Uh, let me think what others there are. Anyway, lots of good pubs. Uh, all all good and played in good spirit and. Um, of course, I play for the Mighty Rain uh, Railway Hotel. Railway Hotel, Mighty Railway Hotel, nice. Yeah. So yeah, that's been good. Um, and I guess my my other good news is I'm going off for a weekend's fishing, so I'm looking very much forward to that. Unfortunately, I won't be going to any of AFL matches, but uh, there's plenty of those in the rest of the year. Nice. So you will go into footy afterwards anyway. Very much, and I'll be certainly listening on the radio and, and watching where I can. Um, but, yeah, and I guess my low in the last couple of weeks is finding out uh, my godson's 21st birthday party was going to be on this weekend where I was already uh, booked in for fishing, so unfortunately unable to uh, attend that, which is over in Perth. Uh, so shout out and happy birthday to my godson, Clancy. Um, happy birthday, mate. <laughs> Happy birthday to Crunchy. Like, uh, your good son is in Perth. Yeah, well, actually, Northern, which is just out of Perth, yeah. But uh, how did you meet him? Uh, well, he's the son of my cousin. Right. Okay, makes sense, understand, right. How about you? you? What's news with you? Oh, so, um, unfortunately, I lost my job at the end of February. Then, um, since then, um, I get raw motivated like, because it's cold as well. I was very sorry to hear that, Yoshi, and uh, I'm sure it's been very hard for you. Absolutely, it's hard. Like, I lost my confidence as well. 
para a classe de ito large job para forte de a voz no tina large fit at a job. I think better to find out sooner than later. Sorry? Better to find that out sooner than later. Yeah, but uh, you know, I try to search a job, then I feel like in the past, I would apply for like, a, for example, like, you know, the uh, trading job, like, a, you know, administration job for the uh, trading company. But now, I'm not sure if I can be a right fit or not, then I feel like powerless, you know, it's kind of, you know, hard, this hard situation right now. I think it's pretty natural that uh, you're going to feel your confidence will be knocked by something like that. Uh, it's very hard to take and, and will take a little bit to get over. But, Yoshi, I have confidence in you uh, that you're a very talented man and, and you'll find something else before too long. Just my lack of what sort of a job with Surit, do you reckon? Uh, how about politics? <laughs> You beat the uh, scandals I could do. No, I have to confront, you know, all politicians, you know. <laughs> well, that might happen. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, to, you know, be a candidate, you know, understand that, like, you know, we need more, a lot of money. Yeah, I think you need to find a, a dedicated group of supporters. <laughs> exactly as well. Then uh, be tired, like you know, no matter what it is, um, I'm feeling down, but I have to find something positive. You know, today, like you know, um, I'm joining you from the new com new computer, but I'm not a brand new computer. It's a second hand computer. That's a positive stuff for now. Well, coming through loud and clear, Yoshi. Pardon? You're coming through loud and clear. <laughs> Just my, like, I, it's a second hand computer, you know, to create uh, regiments for the potential employer. That's why I need a, need a computer. I used to do with my phone to create regiments, but uh, it doesn't apply to the new top document like a new format of the uh, resume that's why i needed the computer like uh, using excel or like a word i understand just anyway my... you're looking very sharp and crisp tonight mate oh good it's just my then uh, let's move on to the our uh, new stories for today and what have you got mad today I've got uh, Melbourne Council takes new steps to punish Ute and SUV drivers. Oh, there are some naughty drivers like you know doing, with Ute, <laughs> then try to shut down from the roads. Yeah, it's you would think it could be something uh, like that, a bit of circle work in the Ute and uh, smoking out the tyres, but. In fact, it's uh, the local Greens councillors in the city of Yarra wanting to charge more money to uh, people who drive larger utes and SUVs uh, for parking and driving around on their streets because mm. uh, they have more em emissions than other vehicles. Uh, so oh. the, in Melbourne, Usually people elect their councillors to look after the things that council can look after around your day-to-day -day living, your amenities, that sort of thing. But more and more um, we've seen councils elected uh, in some parties to make social difference and change within the councils that people live in. And, and this is one of those, I think, they're trying to make a, make a point um, about you know, emissions and and the cost to the society of people who drive bigger cars. Yeah, of course. And um, how do they charge to the, uh, you know, uh, youth owners? Well, this is the point. So the councillors have brought it up at the meeting saying they want to do it, but they're not really sure how they're going to do it. <laughs> Probably, you know, 
take charge in the heavy tax on the uh, like registration fee, like you know, when they go through to the uh, car inspections, like that. That's what a you know council could do, I reckon. Yeah, except I don't think they really have any control over that. It's more of a state issue. So um, probably the only thing they can really control is parking fees. So maybe they can find a way to charge higher parking fees uh, for those larger vehicles. Right, right. But uh, if they don't, you know, park a car in the city centre, like, you know, what will happen? Do you have any idea? I don't know, and as I said, the council's kind of saying they want to do this, but they don't. They don't know how. So, uh, I guess we'll see in time to come. Right. Then um, you say like you know the uh, charging a tax on the you know to the car owners is uh, state government you know uh, task, right? Yeah. But uh. Do you have any, like, you know, the, uh, some sort of the uh, ID card in Australia, like, you know, in Japan, like, it's called my number card, like, you know, using a number to, number is pressed, you know, to each citizen, then uh, they could, you know, tie it up with, like, bank account, et cetera, like, you know, for ID, something like that. Then uh, if you use such a kind of card, then, uh, Probably city council is easily to charge, you know, tax, et cetera. Yoshi, I'm sure if it's happening in Japan, it will eventually happen here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, unfortunately, this uh, country is behind, you know, lagged in uh, like, uh, information technology uh, stuff, I have yeah. to say. It seems so. Yeah, well, but you are. Josh, what have you got? Right. My news is Niseko in Hokkaido to introduce losing tax of up to 2,000 yen a night. Uh, well, I don't know a lot about Niseko other than lots of Aussies like to go there and go yeah. ski. And go skiing there because the uh, there's lots of snow in the winter. That's uh, good. To know that. And I I'm not sure is Hokkaido also a ski resort venue. Sorry, is Hokkaido also a place where people go skiing? Yeah, like uh, of course, like uh, Niseko is very famous for all this. Then um, also Furano, like uh, Tomamu, a uh, popular you know ski resort. Also, Lusutu is very famous as well, like in a deeds years. Then there are heaps of tourists in the winter in Niseko. Then can you guess, you know, how tourists, you know, pay 2,000 yen a night? Like, why, yeah. do they, why do they have to be charged? I assume it's because uh, there's a lack of accommodation for local people. Uh, oh. And so if they charge more to the tourists, they won't take up so much of the, the local lodging. Oh. Uh, I, I'm guessing that's probably why they're introducing it. Good point. But actually, this, you know, Accommodation tax is used to improve their tourism. Like, you know, for example, it, it happens here in Kyoto as well, like in Osaka as well. Then uh, some, you know, tourist destinations, including Kanazawa, like, you know, uh, Nagasaki, something like that. You know, even in Tokyo, happens. Then um, CJ Council corrects the uh, accommodation tax to improve, like, uh, you know, tourism. For example, like you know, the uh, renovation, the toilets, like, uh, yeah. um, you know, inserting something into the bus, for example, the city bus to accommodate, you know, tourists and uh, local people all together. Yeah. Then, uh, in this case, like in this, like you know, um, the town council would fund 
you know, the money into the uh, installing, like, you know, the uh, information board display, you know, digital information. Anyway, so they found such money to the uh, improved, you know, tourism industry. Do you think it might deter some tourists? Sorry, say that again, please. Do you think it might actually deter some tourists from coming with the extra costs? Ah, uh, it's not uh, you know big money for the tourists, so it doesn't you know discourage you know uh, tourists to come to Japan at all. But uh, yeah. you know, for example, like here in Kyoto, like you know. Sorry, so occupied that you know streets and uh, it's hard for locals to walk around. For example, like uh, catch a bus as well. Then uh, you know, tourists has to tourists have to pay extra money to improve you know um, tourism industry. Then uh, even everything around in a uh, city, yeah, or to make sure you know. Um, Locals are happy about that. Yeah, fair so, enough. More comfortable, you know, uh, ride. Sounds like it'll work out all right. Everyone will be a winner. <laughs> yeah, everyone has to be the winner, right? All right, time to talk about the footy now. Like, did you watch the uh, round zero games? I did. Um, I actually enjoyed all of the games. I mm -hmm. thought it was actually you know, quite good to watch those four matches. They were all good matchups, good crowds, uh, and I enjoyed getting back with my friends and watching the footy. Oh, did you go to the game last weekend? No. Uh, oh, they sorry. were in Sydney or Brisbane or in New South Wales or Queensland. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right. But that was fine. You know, I still managed to either watch on TV or go to the pub uh, with friends. So that was nice. good. Yeah. Nice. Some people sort of were feeling like they're a bit left out that their team wasn't playing on the first week. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, but that really didn't worry me, to be honest. I'm happy to wait till this week. And I think everyone's pretty excited for their for their footy team to play this week. Yeah, that's right. Your horse are playing against this and this weekend. My Saints are uh, against Jirong at Kine uh, Kanee Park. Yeah, both should be really good games, I think. Yeah. Um, who did you tip last week, by the way? Like, you know, in the uh, opening round? Like, who did you pick be between uh, Sydney and uh, Melbourne? I picked Sydney at home uh, just because yeah. their, their home crowd was their big opportunity to, to open the season at home um, and they'd really want to make sure they won that and they did. Melbourne have obviously had some off-season things going on that may have affected them uh, and, yeah, Sydney Sydney got it done quite well. Yeah, I think that Sydney would get, you know, a home team advantage so now they are doing really, really well last year. That's why I picked Sydney as well. Then uh, Cal Brisbane versus Carlton. Uh, I picked Brisbane for that one. And they started off like a house on fire. I think they yeah. were eight goals up or maybe even 10 goals up at some stage. I think 46 points up uh, early in the third quarter. But Carlton just came back and kept coming and coming in Brisbane could only reply with points here and there. And in the end, Carlton, with their nose in front towards the end, managed to, to hold on. So it was a great win for them. Yeah, uh, sure. Didn't really expect them to to have that in them, and they were impressive. It's a unbelievable game. Like, you know, I thought that yeah, it's all Brisbane, 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 but then Carlton, you know, you know, shut down the Brisbane. I think, a lot of people, I think a lot of people actually turned the game off at halftime thinking it was over. Yeah, I understand. I was about to turn off the game, but I kept watching 43 or 43. 
Then a Gold Coast versus Richmond, who did you tip? I picked Gold Coast uh, with Damien Hardwick now in charge. Their list did continue to improve and their footy had been improving last year. Good to watch. And, yeah, he took them a step further. It was a little bit like the Brisbane-Carlton game in that uh, Gold Coast got out to a good solid lead in the first half and then Richmond at the start of the third quarter, I think, kicked seven goals in a row and looked like they were going to run over them. But uh, Gold Coast steadied and, and got the win. You yeah, are chipped Gold Coast as well, but I didn't do the game. I was at the free training anyway. Then GW versus Collingwood, who did you chip? I picked GWS again. I thought they they really improved last year and showed some good footy. And I just thought Collingwood might have that uh, premiership hangover. And again, you know, the the opening round, getting the the game at home, I thought that GWS would be really fired up to win that, and that proved to be the case. No, I chipped Collingwood by some mistake. I don't know the reason. Um, oh, no, I think it was reasonable as the reigning premiers, but uh, they yeah, just premier. didn't want to win more. <laughs> reigning premier, that's why I picked, but I thought it was a mistake. Right. Let's tip this weekend's proper round one. Yeah. Tomorrow night. Um, who is the home team tomorrow? Like, um, hang on a minute. Tomorrow, Carlton versus Richmond at MCG. I think Carlton uh, impressed me enough last week to say that they they have stepped it up and they will beat Richmond this year in the opening game of round one. Yeah, like a. Uh... I'm with you, like, Carlton are impressive and uh, improved much last year. Then find out, you know, tipping Carlton. Then Friday night, Colling vs Sydney Swans at MCG. I'll pick Collingwood to come back there, I think. They'll have, they've had their little wake-up call now to say, you know, this is fair to come, the season's on, lift your game. I'm sure that's been the talk at the club all this week, and I think they'll they'll beat the Swans. Yeah, according to the comeback at the home stadium of MCG, then um, they po played poor last week, but uh, they will be bouncing back, back you know, this week, I think. Essendon versus Hoson. On Saturday afternoon? Uh, it's a tough one. Uh, I think it will be a good game. I really don't know who's going to win this, but I'll have to go with my Hawks. Of course, I understand. But unfortunately, I chipped the opponents with the ace and the boomers. Perfectly acceptable, Yoshi, I think. Sorry? I think that's perfectly acceptable. No need to apologise. All good. Just my... GWS versus North Melbourne. I think the Giants will win that, although it's going to be interesting to see North Melbourne, uh, how much they've improved over the off-season. Yeah, it's a comfortable win for the GWS. Then Saturday night, Geelong versus St Kilda. And we picked the Saints there. I've, I'm kind of hoping to see Geelong continue to fall away this year, so go to the Saints. Just my, I pick my Saints as well. Then Gold Coast Suns versus Adelaide Crows. Uh, the Suns to back up with two in a row at home. Yeah. They got a good home team advantage on the Gold Coast. I go for a Gold Coast Suns. Melbourne versus the Western Bulldogs. Uh, I don't think I might go with the Bulldogs here. You pick the Bulldogs? Yep. Right. I go, I tip the D's. 
Yeah, but they, they will come back, you know, at the MCG. Port Adelaide versus West Coast Eagles. Port Adelaide, I expect to be far too strong for the Eagles. Hopefully, we do see the Eagles improving from last year, though. Yeah, I hope uh, West Coast Eagles will improve as well, but unfortunately, Port Adelaide will be good at the home of Adelaide Open. The last game, Fremantle versus Brisbane Lions. Yeah, this is a really tough one to pick over in Perth. I think the the week one game will actually help the Lions a little bit more match hardened. Uh, they'll be pretty stung and sore to lose that first round game, and I think they'll beat Fremantle. But Fremantle, as we've seen the last couple of years, very hard to pick and know how they're going to perform. Um, they've got good potential and an improving list, but uh, I'm going to go with the Lions. Rounds are good. Like last week, they lost against Carlton at Giaba, but it's a rude doesn't change my mind to, you know, pick Brisbane now in this game. Brisbane are so good. Very good. Yeah. That's round one picked. <laughs> so uh let's leave to you know these games to the round to chipping. Then now I'm not sure what sort of a format we should do for a round two chipping. Maybe we can uh submit them offline and then we'll read through them in the next podcast. Yeah, good idea. Let's talk about it later on in the privately. <laughs> All good. What does this good. weekend hold for you, Yoshi? What are you doing? Three. What will you be doing this weekend? I got, uh, you know, joining the uh, free uh, training on Saturday afternoon, then I'm watching the Jirong uh, vs. Saints at home. Then Saturday, Sunday, I'm not sure. I have no plan. How about you? Like, are you going for fishing? Yeah, off fishing. So, actually, got Friday and Monday off work. So, nice. four days up there fishing um, and hopefully catching lots of fish. Good luck. Enjoy. Where about are you going? Uh, in southern New South Wales, near a little town called Moolamine. Nice. How long does it take from Melbourne? Uh, it's about four hours' drive. Nice. And Yoshi, I gave you a little shout out on uh, Aussie Rules the World podcast this week. So, yeah, I've been doing that with uh, Adam and, and Greg, and and every couple of weeks we get together and talk about what's going on around the world, and we're talking about. Uh, how when the AFL season is on after footy training, getting down to the pub together and watching the games. And I said, you'd be doing that in Osaka this week. <laughs> no. Um, like we watched the game last week. Um, like only like, you know, five players, you know, went to the pub together, like a GWS versus Collingwood. Then uh, we talked about, we talked to other guys as well, like, you know, then um, um, I said I'm sent to give the support to other guys, like, you know, in a surrounding, surrounding you know, table. Then um, two guys, you know, Sandra becomes, okay, I'm, I'm a, going for Saints. Then um, I moved over there and talked about Saints fully together. That's what happened last weekend in the pub. Good times. Well done. Just my. All right, mate. I'm going to leave you to it. You have a great weekend. You too, mate. And thanks for watching, everyone. And see you in two weeks. See you, Josh. See you, Crash. <laughs>